Pulp vs. Apocalypse with Pulled Up 1 0. All right, spawning in the top left hand position. You know him, you love him. It's your CM Storms Pulp. And uh, spawning over to the bottom right hand position, the blue Terran. It is IVD Apocalypse. Belshir Vestige, one of those maps where, again, we always see siege tanks being so powerful, and that's something that we didn't mention as much. That's normally a, a go-to, that's normally a normal thing, but on maps like Derelict Washer, you can get away with being a little siege tank light. Not too light, you still need them, especially when you're doing bio siege tank, uh, but you can get away with it because of the impressive concaves that you can take. But on this map, I mean, you will not be witnessing a lot of concaves unless you're defending especially here i mean the watchtowers are the big point of contestation because if you control your opponent's watchtower you have access to the main base you can just siege up right here and just drop you can attack the natural of course coming in from this direction or you can attack the third base so a lot of times players will focus on taking this area but if you're aggressing into this area it's only from one angle and same thing likewise only one angle so a lot of times it's going to be a lot of positional moving around dropping at the main base forcing your opponent to go back into the main and then from there uh trying to take that position we'll find out if that actually happens over here on uh, on belshire vestige for these two players now, what do we have for openings so far, Mike? Well, so far it looks like uh, we actually see that Apocalypse is going for the double barracks play. And Paul just looking like he's doing the standard Banshee opening. Yeah, and uh, normally when you see double barracks, it's going to be double Reapers that pop out here. You poke in with your first Reaper. Just say, okay, I'm going regular Reapers. And then you surprise your opponent with three of them. It's important to make sure that you wait for that third Reaper so that you can really burst in there with a lot of damage. And a lot of times, even if you're up against, uh, let's say, a gas first build, they won't have that marine count that they need to defend against that many Reapers. We'll probably see that pretty soon here. But the first Reaper is on the way out now. Second Reaper is being built, and you're going to see the barracks times out perfectly where you get 50 gas. Look at that. It's just a super clean build and two Reapers at the same time. How will Pult defend this, though? We've seen Pult do some miraculous defenses, especially against Biol. I don't know how he did that still, but we've seen him do a lot. Uh, the trick to defending against this, I would say, is to get a Hellion out. Hellions are so effe effective against this, but normally you just get a tech lapse immediately on this factory and just disregard that completely. And he hasn't chosen yet. And I like this going command center directly behind this. I've seen this a couple of times. And normally you'll just see three barracks behind this, an engineering bay. And from there, you just go into macro mode. It's a nice way to apply pressure and keep up with macro against your opponent. That's going normally a Banshee. Income tab showing 20 to 18, so very similar. You can see the SEV cut that was needed. And now switching over. This could be tough for Port to defend. I think so. Coming in here, but killing the Reaper right away. Oh my gosh. That is not the type of fight Apocalypse was looking for. And he needs to back away from this. I mean, he can't really do much. Uh, that's really unfortunate. So maybe he has one more chance to get something done. He has another Reaper coming. But I don't know. There's five Marines now. Yeah. This boat just didn't work out at all for him. No, I mean, that burst damage, he wasn't expecting that to happen. And uh, losing a Reaper is, is really, really tough on this build. Uh, from here, I almost feel like... A lot of times you would say it's a losing position and, and you move on to the next game because... It's so hard to come back from that. You're behind in tech. You're going to be facing very cost-efficient Banshees pretty soon here. And you can't put any pressure on for yourself. And losing Marines in the beginning stage is pretty critical. Losing SCVs in the beginning stage is pretty critical. It's normally what happens when these Banshees come out and you don't have turrets or Marines, really, to counter, or stim the Marines to counter what, what is approaching. Banshee uh, moving across the map. And Apocalypse is just retreating all the way back to this main base. Now, I like this a lot 
you just say, okay, uh, it's a point where I don't have my economy, I don't have my infrastructure ready to defend against two positions that a lot of people would be trying to defend to. But Apocalypse just saying, okay, let's just cover my main base, make sure that I don't die here, and then from there, I'll start to stabilize a little bit more, and I will gain a much higher count in units, and then I can just be able to take my expansion thereafter. So it's a perfectly legitimate way, and I think a very safe way to do this. Two kills, though, on the Banshee so far. Now moving in to kill some SCVs. Uh, Marines are going to poke in front, and the scan might be able to kill. Nope. It's it so tough to kill Banshees with uncertain Marines. That's two scans so far. That's a lot of minerals that you've lost already. 540 minerals total. And now he's going in for a second time, killing a couple more benches. He doesn't even need cloak because you have no way of of actually closing the distance. So it's so intelligent. Now just going to go back because he doesn't want to lose it unnecessarily. Banshee in the natural, though, is doing damage against the command center. But the command center is still pretty healthy. Behind this, we do have a command center up for Pult. He has gone for the standard just mass marines siege tank. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if Pult just went for the attack directly after this. He's been... So far ahead in just his units. He's been ahead in uh, the amount of siege tanks that are out. Yeah, I think he's definitely planning on doing a push. Maybe with two tanks. I'm not sure how many he wants to wait for. But from what he's doing now, it looks like he's going to push now. Well, not now, but sometime soon. Yeah. We'll see as uh, the two Banshees get in here. And look at this micro. Oh, my gosh. He's just killing so many Marines. Auto turret is being placed, but he doesn't even care. He's just saying, please, attack into me. But now the Vikings are out, and this is going to be game over for the Banshees. They're going to keep kiting and do whatever they can, but uh, both of them should die. They should die. Can this Banshee get out? No, it cannot. So let's take a look at the units lost tab. 550 to 775. You can see still with those Banshees dying. Pult is a lot, a lot more cost efficient. In the Harvesters tab, 30 to 34. So it's a small advantage economically, but this push is what I'm so scared of. And what I love about Pult is he put this Widow Mine out here, and this is so smart. Just gives him information to see if there's any counterattacks that's happening uh, in, in, you know, mm -hmm. a few short moments. I think Apocalypse will be able to defend against this just fine, though. He saw it coming with a unit at the Watchtower, and he has two siege tanks as well. So even though he's behind in Marines and doesn't have that Udo mine, I mean, I think he still has what he needs to defend. Reaper sprinted into the natural, but it's not going to do anything. And yes, I agree with you. I don't think it will be able to do any damage. Um, but we'll find out. He's still going to try. Two Vikings against one. Auto turrets are going to go down. He's going to try to commit to this. And wow, there's just too much here. The sea tanks just get torn apart. I guess I was wrong. Yeah, me too. As Colt is able to just bulldoze his way in, and Apocalypse, it doesn't oh, look like he stands a chance. He this really. Is why. Apocalypse moved out with a medevac with eight Marines in it. I oh, think that yeah. took away most of the units, and we didn't notice it pick up so many Marines. And now doing a lot of damage to the command center. He's going to have to lift off, but it looks like he will be able to defend for a little bit longer. He still needs a lot more units over here. His production isn't that large, but the drop goes into the natural of. Pult's base and will catch Pult off guard, but there are two siege tanks and a lot of marines ready to defend it. I love this. He actually pulls the siege tank back, anticipating some sort of move around, and the medevac will just back out from there. So, oh my god. Keep doing that. And luckily for Apocalypse, Pult's not pushing in. I think he could try to push against this one. Maybe not with the second siege tank now. But before that, it was just one tank and maybe two marines. Yeah, Apocalypse starting to stabilize, but what's the damage done? 39 harvesters at 42. Not that big of a difference. I'm actually very surprised. The command centers are popping up, but Pult is slightly more ahead. Uh, and the army tab is looking ahead for Pult. So, you know, we were in the same situation last game, where, but it was flipped around. Apocalypse was the one that was slightly ahead going into this mid-game stage. But especially on Belshire Vestige, anything can really happen. I mean, it is... Uh, a map where army sizes mean a lot, but more so tank sizes mean a lot more. And it is 5 to 2, so uh, there you have it. We have aggressive options for Pult a lot more than uh, Apocalypse. 
Apocalypse does have a small upgrade lead, but that's not nearly as good as the, the tank lead that Colton has. Is Metabag helping him though? Yeah, it is. Uh, quite well, but it looks like finally it'll be cleaned up to a single siege tank. Uh, SCVs look like they were focusing some SCVs for now. Or excuse me, uh, Marines look like they were focusing some SCVs, but it's going to be fine. And we're going to go into uh, kind of a, a slight advantage for Pult mid-game. Third bases are going to be taken pretty soon here. Pult has that economic advantage. Now what I think Apocalypse needs to do in this position, he's doing everything right I think for the most part, just being very aggressive on the map, making it very uncomfortable for Pult to move out to take whatever position he wants. But for now I think what Apocalypse needs to do is just get out onto the map and try to have a good engagement in the middle. Now it's a little bit difficult, but if you have that siege advantage on your opponent, anything can really happen. And along with the uh, the Raven that he still has, you can still do a double seeker missile and, and burst down a lot. Uh, the engagement though is gonna start out with Apocalypse just losing a siege tank. He needs to be already sieged for sure. And oh, this can actually help. And he's going to overwhelm all the siege tanks. Auto turrets are placed to tank a little bit of the damage. Every single one of the siege tanks are going to go down. In the meantime, there's a Banshee doing damage at the third base over here in mid right hand position. But wow, Apocalypse able to take a massive advantage now. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's not an advantage. It's kind of an equalizer, rather. Mm hmm. Yeah, he's still behind in Marines. And I mean, he does have a lot more medevacs, though. That could come into play. Yeah, Banshee now doing damage against the main base. Income tab 49 harvesters to 56. It's very slightly. Oh, unfortunate. Auto turret goes down. And, but Apocalypse does has, have the position advantage. I mean, he will be able to aggress over into his opponent's watchtower. And that's where you really start to net the kills. That's where you're able to execute the attacks and just put your opponent in a very uncomfortable situation. Marines and Siege Tanks moving forward. But Apocalypse is going to keep reinforcing this. Of course, he realizes how important this area is. And we might have a, a confrontation coming up here pretty soon. As Pult should know that he wants to maintain this area. And he's doing that, but uh, he needs to be careful because... Whoa, look at this. Mass Doom Drop. And there is a very easy place. There's multiple... Wait, wait. Oh... Polk can get some money. Oh, oh he's going to kill one medevac. And this is so risky because now he has no good place to drop. He needs to go back all the way. And he still is in a position where he's under serious, serious trouble. Wow, that was, uh, that was an unnecessary risk because he gave up so much position from doing that. Yeah, it definitely didn't work like, out. Maybe he should have swung more to the left of the map before yeah, trying to go in. Or not even that. You can just, if you're going to do that path, you can just walk there. Yeah, on the ground and then pick it up right before you get up to the cliff. Yes, exactly. Uh, double Seeker Missile was able to kill one of the Siege Tank, one of the big advantages, I would say, of the Raven. But at this stage, I, I think... Um, Apocalypse should be able to just unsiege it, lift it, and then it's fine. Not everyone can make her like major. Not everybody can. Uh, here's the big stim, and the Marines only, though. Where's the siege tanks? A mess up from Apocalypse, and now we can see a large slew of units moving across the left side of the map. But Apocalypse knows it's coming with the Marine there on the Cell Naga Tower. I think this is a stalemate position. I don't think Polk can do anything of this. Neither can Apocalypse, so we're going to see more emphasis on the left-hand side. Marines and Medivacs over here against Pult. So let's look at the upgrades. 2-1 against 1-1. One, one. So there's an upgrade lead for, uh, for Pult momentarily, though. 2-2 two, two is just about to finish. And it's, it's pretty even yet again. I mean... <laughs> Like, they, these guys get to this stage where it's very hard for each other to aggress on each other. Paul has a small lead. He has a quicker fourth in production, and he has slightly more supply. But this isn't that much of one. And here medevac, goes. These medevacs and all these marines are going to get some stuff done, though. Yep. Just cool. pokes in, gets out, though. He realizes he's up against a much larger count. He doesn't want to be trading this out, but Apocalypse looking 
to find him over on the other side of the map. And he might do that in a little bit here. Meanwhile, is there any mobilization? Yes, there might be some mobilization on the, the right side. And I think this Paul is going to escalate. In. There's only a few Marines with Apocalypse's forces, but I think he oh, might just man. be taking a better position. Yeah, this is escalating so well because Apocalypse was oh, so Apocalypse worried on the left side. From every side. He's flanking. A lot of Marines, but oh, they come in staggered. So Apocalypse loses so many. Whoa. How did they even do that? I have no clue. <laughs> And now he's going to be sandwiched. He lifts up it with a couple of, or just one medevac. Big losses there, though. Yes, I mean, that did not work out anywhere to the point where he wants to. And Apocalypse, yet again, go for these Doom Drops. I really don't like uh, committing that much to, uh, it's a gamble. But the third base is pretty unprotected here. A single ma Marine will be able to catch this coming in. And what will Pult do? That's the question. He's pushing in, saying, you have a lot of Marines out of position. I'm going to go for it. But Apocalypse able to stay alive. Losing a couple of tanks though. But this medevac drop from Apocalypse. Oh, it can do massive in. damage. And Paul's units are just moving out. They, they'll probably turn around, but still, maybe he'll lose his command center. That's a lot of Marines. They can target down that command center quickly. Yep, and he's doing that right now. He wasn't able to get the SEVs. But he's going to look at it all. Yes, he will. And now, and now Marines up. streaming in. Him. And this will actually net a couple of SEV kills, but the medevacs die out here. And from that, let's take a look at the units lost. So Apocalypse has lost more. Pult has very intelligently taken a base over in the mid left hand position. A drop is going to go over there once he actually uh, scans and sees that happen. And look at the little dots on the minimap of Pult. I mean, this is some really, really cool stuff. He Funny has, enough, this one medevac of Apocalypse in the top left of course. has just been alive for the last like 15 minutes. Almost, but it doesn't matter because <laughs> there's a lot more friends over here that's going to come to defend against this one medevac drop. And it will most likely go down pretty soon here. Maybe. I thought it was. Well, medevacs go down in the middle of that. Uh, and Apocalypse just put in a very uncomfortable situation Definitely. where... Where just a small group of units is able to keep him completely contained, but he realizes that wait, there's a lot of units over in your natural. I think I can break this, and he should go for the break pretty soon here. And there it is. SCDs, here he goes. This is a very cost efficient way of starting up the engagement, and now most of the siege tanks have died. Marines just stimming and stutter stepping inside, and he will be able to kill all of the Marines and siege tanks over here. A good engagement. A drop in the top right hand corner, but here's the main army of Pult. He's swinging into the natural, and Apocalypse has no clue this is coming. This is disastrous for Apocalypse. Oh my goodness. I'm surprised he's coming back to defend. Well, I guess uh, he, that's, he can't do anything be, else. I don't know though. Uh, and he's going to try this to swing in, but work. there's just way too much stuff. Uh, and he's going to stagger jump. There it is. GG.